morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Jafari. I am an assistant professor uh, in the construction management department uh, at Louisiana State University. So I arrived two days ago, and uh, my body is still adapting to the new time zone. It's like 3 a.m. Uh, my time, so if I started yawning in, in the middle of the presentation, please excuse me. I have a question from the chair. Since it's a 90 minutes session and we have only four presenters, can we have more time to present? Maybe? No? Are you ready to drive the chair? No, never mind. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I'm uh, here on behalf of two of my PhD students uh, who uh, did a great job to prepare this uh, paper. They couldn't be here to present, so I came here uh, to present their paper uh, which entitles Lighting Energy Load Prediction Framework Using Agent-Based Simulation and Artificial Neural Network Models. So to start, a uh, building consumes a lot of energy uh, in the United States, around 40% of uh, energy and 70, around 70% 70 of electricity generated in the U.S. consumes by energy in different uh, aspects of the building, including energy system, heating, cooling, lighting, and things like that. When we are trying to predict energy in buildings, there are so many different factors that can be important, including the building factors, such as building envelope, size of the building, the location of the building, and the building energy systems, as well as a lot of uh, factors related to the people who use these buildings, including the indoor environmental quality, uh, the operation of the building, and of course, occupant behavior. So uh, anyone here is part of the Annex, the uh, energy modeling group? No, so uh, one of the main source of uh, uncertainties in the buildings are related to occupant behavior when we are thinking about energy simulation. So even two uh, similar uh, energy models can have different uh, energy performance if we change the occupant behavior or the occupancy schedule in those buildings. And this paper uh, tries to focus on that. So to highlight the importance of uh, modeling and simulation of occupant behavior, I, uh, we have published a, a systematic uh, literature review paper recently. It is uh, it's entitled Modeling and Simulation of Energy-Related Human-Building Interaction. If you are interested to learn more about, uh, we have uh, reviewed around 95 papers in depth about modeling and simulation of uh, occupant behaviors and come up with a lot of uh, gap in the literatures and future direction of the research. Uh, in this paper, we also focus on lighting, lighting energy consumption, which is uh, in office buildings can be a huge amount, a huge portion of electricity consumption, usually around 20 to 30 percent. And uh, the, uh, when we are talking about the occupant behavior in terms of lighting, one uh, good example of the use of technology is the occupancy sensors. So you probably have seen the occupancy sensors uh, when the lighting can be controlled. So without a sensor, when an occupant get out of a room, sometimes they might forget to turn off the lights. But when there is an occupancy sensor, when they out get out, uh, usually the lights turns off automatically. And these uh, occupancy sensors are proven to reduce the uh, lighting load by 60%. Uh, so what uh, this study tries to do is to predict lighting energy load uh, by considering something that we call a dynamic occupancy schedule with the help of agent-based modeling and artificial neural network. So uh, how many of you are familiar with agent-based modeling? Okay, great, so we have a couple of people here. So uh, agent-based modeling is a kind of uh, modeling that uh, it includes like uh, agents and environments. The agents can be formulated in a way that they can interact with each other and with the environment. In this specific problem, we actually model the occupants using the agents and the building as, as an environment to uh, simulate their, uh, 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 the occupancy schedule in a building. So this is the agent-based uh, modeling framework that we propose. We consider three occupancy inputs, including the occupant's uh, presence, location, and interaction. I'm gonna talk in, in detail a little bit uh, in each of these inputs. And then building in, uh, inputs uh, in the environment, including the layout of the building, uh, lighting systems, 
and the existence of uh, occupancy sensor to come up with uh, something that we call it uh, uh, a stochastic occupancy schedule and also the lighting performance of the building based on that uh, occupancy schedule. So the occupancy input first, the presence uh, includes two uh, algorithms. The first is uh, workday absence events that if the occupants show up in the office or not. I'm not gonna go through uh, 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 detail of these algorithms, just gonna uh, mention that, but if you want to learn more, I can uh, refer you to other papers that we have. And then ar arrival and departure events that we model them as a Gaussian uh, distribution, for example, like if uh, we assume like the uh, occupants uh, have to be in their uh, office around 8 a.m., not everyone's gonna show up exactly at 8 a.m., they could be sooner or later, and this kind of modeling can kind of uh, consider that dynamic uh, behavior of the human. Then we have the location, and by location I mean the movement of the occupants inside the building. We have uh, three different algorithms. First is the movement and stay time. For the stay time, uh, for a specific office model, we just survey uh, some of the, our staff in the department to see like how, how long they stay in their own office, the other offices, bathrooms, a hallway, and things like that, and then we use Markov chain model and a transition a probability matrix to, uh, to kind of uh, model the movements of the occupants in the building. We have uh, an algorithm for the meeting events that when the meeting happens, how many meetings per day, how many people goes to the meetings and things like that, and an algorithm for the lunch break that uh, usually happens around noon. Uh, could be inside the building, could they could, the occupants can go outside, uh, and uh, it's actually developed for each occupants. And then the interaction for this specific problem, we focus on the interaction of occupants with lights. So it's two uh, algorithms that we de developed, the entrance uh, light switch when someone gets in the building, they turn on, in, in, in the room they turn on the lights, and then exit light switch, then if there is a, uh, occupancy sensors, the lights will turn off automatically. If there is no occupancy sensors, the occupants have a chance to forget uh, turning off the lights and leave the room. And then uh, this is an example case, a simple office layout that we use for simulation. It's a five single occupancy office, two bathroom, one meeting room, and one lounge. It's very small, very typical office, uh, uh, single occupancy office. Of course, it has some uh, limitations. There is no uh, windows. There is a small high, uh, hallways and things like that. So we use a software called NetLego for agent-based modeling. The things that I like about this software is the amount of visualization that it gives you. And we model the three occupants inputs, the presence, movements, and interactions in an agent-based model. So we consider four scenarios when the office is fully occupied with five occupants or if it's under-occupied by three occupants, and then two uh, situations when there is a, a, uh, an occupancy sensor in, installed in the building and when there is uh, no occupancy sensors. So this is an, uh, the, the interface of the simulation platform. I, I reduce the time step to one second, so you can see the uh, simulated occupants moving from room to room, stay there, we have, I guess, uh, in this simulation, the uh, 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 occupancy sensors uh, input is on, so the lights get turned off automatically after 60 seconds when the occupants leave the room. And there are, uh, you can see, like, we have visualized the lights and everything almost there. So the green boxes are kind of the inputs that we have defined for uh, this simulation, and the yellow boxes are our outputs that we, we get from this simulation. So the results of agent-based modeling, uh, the red line shows our dynamic schedule compared to the ASHRAE standards that uh, most of the energy simulation to tools in uh, states, in the states I actually use, and you can see the comparison between these two. And then for each office, we could come up with an average uh, occupancy based on the inputs that we define for that. And of course, based on that occupancy, we could come up with uh, the amount of lighting energy consumption based on the type of the lights that we assume for the office, and in uh, both scenarios of uh, with or without occupancy sensors that you can see with, uh, actually with occupancy sensors, it shows that the lighting energy consumption could be reduced up to uh, 
So now we have this uh, agent-based model simulation for our dynamic occupancy schedule. We have different scenarios. Another student of mine uh, decided to see if we can generalize this. So this kind of uh, modeling and simulation, specifically for uh, small uh, time, time steps, is very uh, heavy in computations, and we couldn't run the model for a long time. So we run it for a few months, and another student of mine tried to see if we can predict the uh, profile of the lighting load using a uh, machine learning technique, which is uh, artificial neural network. So artificial neural network works uh, based on, uh, actually follows the similar patterns in uh, human brain's uh, neural network. It usually includes uh, different layers, uh, one input layer, some uh, hidden layers, and one output layers. I personally don't know what's, what's happening in the neural, uh, neural network. I will usually use that. Uh, as a prediction tool, so we give them the inputs and it gives us a really good prediction of the output. In this case, uh, to improve uh, the accuracy, we use three layers in the neural network. We use some inputs for the time series of our uh, uh, lighting load profiles. Uh, the inputs are the time of the day, day of the week, and the, uh, the location of, uh, for example, the room in the office in addition to so many other occupant-related uh, uh, inputs, and then the output would be the lighting status. Is it on or off uh, uh, in the, in the uh, simulated data? So we actually created a big database of uh, simulation and then cut it in 70% uh, uh, for training and 30% for uh, validating to see if we can predict the uh, 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 low, uh, lighting uh, load based on uh, this neural network. And then we use a Python, uh, a toolbox for in Python to see if we can uh, predict the lighting load. So these are uh, some of the results, example of the results that shows what we got from the simulation and what we got from the uh, uh, neural network that we call it predicted values. And you can see, for example, for the bathrooms, the results are not very promising because it's very random when the occupant uses the bathroom. But for the offices, if the results is more promising, it can the predicted values can uh, kind of uh, very close to the what we have uh, got from the simulation. So this is our confusion matrix of the neural network uh, for four different scenarios, and we have calculated the accuracy F1 score. Again, as you can see, it's not very promising. The highest accuracy that we got is around 93% with the F1 score of 81, and it's for scenario number two, which is three occupants and with the uh, uh, occupancy sensors. And uh, as you can see, like in scenario two and four, when there is an occupancy sensors, the accuracy of results is better. That means like the uh, lighting load can be predicted better comparing to where there is uh, no occupancy sensors. Uh, uh, and this is the results of the uh, lighting electricity consumption based on the neural network. And you can see, although the results of the profile loads is not very promising, the uh, prediction of uh, the total uh, lighting energy consumption is almost matched from the neural network and the agent-based model. And that's pretty much it. So to uh, summary, uh, so we try to use an agent-based model to simulate uh, the the, something that we call it uh, dynamic uh, uh, occupancy schedule, and then use it to see if uh, we can model the lighting uh, energy consumption with and without uh, occupancy sensors, and then use a neural network to see if we can predict these values without simulation uh, for any buildings instead of modeling e each building in our uh, agent-based model. The results shows uh, 82 to 93 percent of accuracy, specifically for the uh, buildings with occupancy sensors, the result could be more promising. And then, the, of course, there are a lot of limitations. Uh, we are expanding, we are trying to expand our research. The office building that we assumed uh, to, for the simulation didn't have any windows. So, and for the lighting, uh, energy consumption, the uh, presence of windows and blinds becomes more important. So we are right now trying to model that in our agent-based model as well. So if you'd like to learn more about our research, we have a uh, website for our research group. It's called spice-lab.com. 
I would like to thank you everyone for your attendance and I'm ready for any question. Thank you.